Hey, welcome to the CXO Circle uh, podcast where we um, we have coaching conversations and we marry marry the business, professional development, and spiritual growth world all in one. So I met KD, uh, aka um, Kevin Dorsey, through Pavilion, which is a, a revenue, a lot of SaaS, uh, software as a service, sales leaders are part of that. And really enjoyed all of your courses. You're hilarious. Uh, you're real, authentic, and yeah, I think you might be the most confident person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> interesting. Oh, we can unpack that. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk about that. But you are a practice lead uh, for revenue leadership, so you help a lot of software as a service sales leaders grow from zero to 100 million annual reincurring revenue. And um, you are a mentor. You were a VP uh, at Patient Pop and head of sales development and, and sales enablement at Service Titan and a, a vice president of sales at Snack Nation. But yeah, um, excited to have you on the podcast. No, I'm pumped for it, man. Anything that you know marries the, the business side with the person and the spiritual side, I'm all for it. So let's do this. Let's dive in. Let's do it. So yeah, um, what, what is your claim to fame, would you say? Like, what do most people know you for? Oh, geez. I don't think I'm famous at all. Um, I think what people know me for is, you know, call it like the LinkedIn you know, personality and like content, right? So I, I coach, I train, I consult. So I'm very, I say, well known in the software sales world. And, you know, I think that's where where I've built my name and my brand. And I think some of what I'm known for, I think is a little bit of like that authenticity, like of just like, you know, you know what you're gonna get with me, whether that's good or bad. And, you know, people the right type of people resonate with it. It doesn't resonate with everybody, but that's also okay. That's funny. Yeah, you, you definitely resonate with me, right? I think, well, not only, you know, being, I'm a person of color, right? So I, I definitely, when I see other leaders who aren't the, the, the typical mold, right, of like middle-aged white men, I definitely respect that, right? And yeah, I, th I think you're hilarious because you're willing to say what most people are afraid to say and you're really mm -hmm. upfront and, and blunt about it, but it's refreshing because it's like, oh yeah, we get it, right? But uh, yeah, I could see how that's not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah, which is which is fine, you know, and, and I've talked about this with people too. There's a difference between being authentic and offensive. Right? I never try to be offensive. I'm not here to offend anybody. I'm not here to, you know, it's not like for shock reasons, right? I'm just trying to get the people riled up. It's like, you know, I'm going to be going to be me i'm going to be who who i am and also you know speak to what i think people are actually dealing with or actually going through which is funny right because you mentioned like me being the most confident person you've you've ever met and i don't know how i'd ever even label myself that way i believe in in myself and i try to be who i am right and that's taken me a long time and a lot of work to to get to this this point of i would say i am more the word I use for myself, I'm more accepting of myself than I am confident. I accept who I am. I accept who I am. I believe in who I am and that I'm going to do my very best. But it's interesting, like even just hearing you say that, I was like, huh, I've never, I don't think I've ever considered myself confident, right? And it, that's that word threw me a little bit. So I have to unpack oh, that one a little bit. Yeah, that, that's funny, right? Because how we, I mean, clearly you've done a lot of, you're very comfortable in your own skin, right? Like you said, you, you've really have, it sounds like, done the work and you know your, your strengths and weaknesses and you have an extreme high self-awareness of your, your, you know, what you're capable of, it sounds like. Yeah, that, that's definitely, you know, it's been a lot of work, right? A lot of reading, a lot of journaling, a lot of, I mean, hypnotherapy has changed my, my life, affirmation, states of being, just all, all of that to be, you know, more, more accepting and more believing of my, in myself and of myself. And um, mm -hmm. it's a great, it's a great place to get to, you know, because once, once you do accept and understand that, you know, you can't change people's minds of you, you really can't like, and trying to actually takes you down a different path. I spent many of my early years of my career trying to be someone different, trying to fit in, trying to play the game and talk like everybody else and lead like everybody else. It didn't, it didn't, first of all, it didn't work. And second of all, it still doesn't matter. Like, cause then like people can tell when you're not authentic, they can tell. And so no matter what, so you're not being authentic to you, the people around you can tell you're not being authentic. At what point do you stop that? 
and just lean into to who you are and who you want to be. And I also understand that there, there's limitations to that, right? I understand there will be people that won't accept me as I am. Hmm. Okay, so be it. That, that's so interesting hearing you say that, right? Because I don't think I've met anyone who doesn't like really love what you do. Like every you know, being part of the pavilion community for quite some time, every time we do our, our, our small groups, uh, whether that's the frontline manager training or, or any of the other trainings, like we, everyone just talks about you all the time. They're like, man, like that was the best course, like hands down, you know, or, or you were the best speaker hands down. And, uh, I think, like you said, it's refreshing. Right. And, and, uh, that, that's interesting. So when the, when there were other people that you tried to emulate, um, did it just feel off or like, were you self-conscious? Like what, um, what happened? Always, what always, it's so self-conscious. So, or like, because you're you're questioning everything you're doing, and it also always puts you in a state of comparison. When you are trying to be somebody else, you are always comparing yourself to someone else, right? And the old quote, right? Comparison is the thief of joy. You you can't be somebody else, and it's 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 an impossible task. You could never be me. And I could never be you. It doesn't matter, right? It does not matter how hard I tried to be you. I never could. And so it's an impossible task to even chase. And so but then you're always comparing, right? Am I, you know, what would Davidson do here, right? Like, what did he achieve? What if you, you never allow yourself to be happy in the moment, right? And so flipping that and going like, all right, I'm going to work on me, be happy with me first, right? Like, because also too, and we forget this, if I don't like me, why would anyone else? Yeah. If I don't believe in me, why would anybody else? Right. And if I'm trying to be someone else and there's nothing to believe in, right. Because you can't be someone else. So that was, that was a big step for me. Right. Especially you, know, you opened up with this, like as a minority, as someone does not look like everybody else, someone, you know, like does not talk like everybody else that mm -hmm. took a lot of work to, to get through. But when it was be, I was, I'll never, ever forget this. His name was Robert. He came up to me after I spoke at Topo. This was, God, eight years ago, maybe? Who knows? Eight years? So I'm like, seven, eight years ago. And it was like my, one of my first like big like speaking engagements, right? And I had on green Chuck Taylors and I wore a backwards hat and I went up there and just, just did my thing, right? And like, it went really, really well. There was like standing room only. Like people were like texting people during like, yo, you need to come over to this dude's <laughs> session. So I did the session, had a great time, got off stage, you do the handshakes, kissing babies, all that. And I was walking to, you know, go be by myself because also we'll get into this. I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert, which oh, also really? catches people oh. off guard. Um, but I was walking to like, <laughs> go be by myself for a second and this gentleman came up to me his name was Robert I wish I could remember his last name but you know black dude as well and he came up and said thank you he said thank you for being you up there and I was like hmm. what do you mean he's like I've never seen me on stage before and you know what I mean like talking the way that you did the energy the enthusiasm but also the language and the slang and the the, the all that that you brought there like he's like thank you for being you and I'll never forget that because you know i would spent all this time trying to be accepted by everybody else when in reality it's like the other it's like the people that I already am like mm -hmm. that need more of me and so that was a big moment for me and um, I'll never I'll never forget that I, I love what you said. Maybe that's why I resonate with everything that you say. Every time, like you're teaching one of the the sessions, right? I'm always like, "Oh man, this is gonna be awesome," just because, like you said, right? The, the it typically looks a certain way, right? Like, um, I talk about like code switching a lot with my 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 coach is, is black. Uh, he's an executive coach, and uh, it's interesting, right? Like when I when I'm in the when I worked at LinkedIn as an account executive, right? all of my teammates were, were white pretty much. And I real and then when my friends call me, I would pick up the phone and be like, yo, what's up, man? And then my friends, my coworkers look at me like, that's Davidson? Like, that's so weird because when he talks to us, like completely different. Um, mm -hmm. And and I realized like there's a lot of energy and mental energy that I spend trying to like shift and try to be different, right? When I talk to old people or whatever it is. But um, yeah, it's, it's I would say it's pretty exhausting, right? At the end of the day, like I, I felt like I'm like, oh, I have to be a certain way. Like, I have to, you know, fit the bill or I have to like fit in with everyone else, right? Um, I think out of like the 32 account executives at LinkedIn Learning, I was like the only minority, right? So it was, it was, it was like a survival mechanism, but yeah, I was exhausted by the end of it. I was like, oh my God, like I, I just can't do another a month of this, you know?
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and that's what's hilarious. Right? Even that example you give, they never actually fully accepted because you didn't allow them to. Right. The moment they're like, wait, that's Davidson. They, they can't, they never could accept you because you weren't being you. So we fight to be accepted. But then if we are not being ourselves, they're not even accepting us. It doesn't, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't. Right. And so those are, that was, that was, like I said, that was a big moment and shift for, for me when I started just to lean in to it and God, was it free? Like it still is to, to this day. Like it just feels so much better. It feels just amazing that's awesome yeah and um i've uh, been part of like even in sales right there's just not a lot of uh, black people like i i notice like i tend to gravitate to all the, the black uh, enterprise account executives or sellers like at linkedin and other companies just because we were always looking at each other like yeah we got we got to look after each other you know <laughs> so mm-hmm. um yeah it's, it's it's that's awesome that you're leading the way and and what's possible for for so many people right because i think people just don't even know about it they don't know Hey, you can make a lot of money in tech sales. Like when you grow, when you grow up and you're like a little kid, you're people aren't like, hey, you should get into tech sales, right? That's not like a thing that people talk about. But I think now it's becoming more and more popular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ho- hopefully, you know. And you know, I go, I don't even go back and forth. Like you know, my viewpoints on minorities in sales, I think actually differ and surprise people um, as I go go through it. Like. You know, if we'll talk about like not enough blacks in sales and I've been a part of some communities and this is an area where it's like what my focus is like we have an attraction problem. We, we're not attracting enough of us into sales, right? We're not attracting enough of us into the career, right? So we have to start much earlier. This isn't a recruiting problem. This isn't a, re- it's not, right? I was a black sales leader and it was hard for me to do it on purpose, right? Like we have an attraction problem, but the other is I do think in a lot of places, and again, like people might hate me for this statement, I don't care, is we also have, I think, a misaligned expectation of what we're actually looking for, right? What percentage of America is black? Do you know? Is it 23%? 13, 13% of America is, is black, okay? So now, right, so like, we have to even understand what our expectation is because if you have a hundred person sales team, if you were just matching the demographic, there would only be 13 there. Hmm. Right. Just match now split that in half, right? Because male to female percentages, we know more men are in sales than women are. So like the percentages to even actually meet standard demographics there's not as much of us as people think and so like we have you know people like oh there's not enough black people on the team it's like yes i agree that doesn't fix anything right like we have to be a track but also just understand what our expectations are right of like well when would we be happy 50 50 30 70 20 80 like what what is the number we're trying to get to and then work backwards from from there like again i stopped also caring about that that much like over the past few years like i'm going to do what i can to lead the way and attract people in that's what i'm here to do yeah but like you said i mean you just being the example of of leadership at the highest level and just you know i think that actually is making more of a difference like like that person robert that reached out to you right it's Mm -hmm. like for me representation at the highest level is the most important thing because i could see myself as a vp one day right like yeah that that, but that's interesting yeah statistically speaking when you say it that way then actually like we were pretty diverse at linkedin right if you look across the maybe three thousand people in the sales org there's probably at least like 300 black sales people you know right so that's what like and that's where and i i've that this to the, the black communities I'm a part of is like we we fight the wrong fights we focus on the wrong things like do do things need to get better yes absolutely I'm not saying things don't need to get better but it's like yo like we're fighting the wrong fight right now mm-hmm. it's actually not maybe as off as we think it is and there's ways that we need to start if we had more people applying it's not so much that we can't even get the jobs right I was in I hired almost 200 people over the last three years, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't get enough black applicants, Mm -hmm. period, end of story, right? Like that's just from the applicant side. And that was me proactively reaching out. That was like working with the schools and all, you just don't get enough Mm -hmm. applicants 
that's the fight we need to be fighting versus trying to fight the companies per se. So I don't know if that's where the conversation was going to go today, but again, like these are things that like I look at a lot of things differently. If you really just step back from them and look at them holistically and go, huh, what's actually the problem here? Huh? What are we actually trying to solve for? It takes you a different direction. I think it's refreshing, right? Like you tend to think very outside the box and you're not trapped in what everyone else is thinking, right? It sounds like you've done that and then you realize, okay, this is not working. Let me let me have a 30,000 foot view perspective instead of just being in it. Because I think when people are trapped in it, they always say mm-hmm. you're stuck under the, the boulder with that person. Someone that's outside could just be like, just move to the side and then you won't get crushed by the boulder, right? But mm-hmm. a lot of people are underneath it. So then they can't, it's hard for them to see anything else. Exactly. So I'm, I'm curious, it sounds like you did a lot of self-development where you really have taken a, a close look uh, inwards. Um, how did you find out about hypnotherapy? And um, I think that's still something that not is not mainstream yet. It's like certain people, mm-hmm. you know, like NLP and things like that. But uh, how did you get into that? So funny enough, man, um, she was a client of mine. So prior to getting into like full like software sales, I I ran personal training studios in LA. And so I built three very successful personal training studios in in LA and was a part of that, that growth. So I ran a team there, sold the, you know, sold the packages and all that. And one of the clients there, Sasha Carion was a hypnotherapist. And so we actually negotiated the the owner of the, um, studios david negotiated a barter between her where she could train for free if we could get you know free sessions and i wasn't like a huge you know call like believer of it initially but then she started working with some of the clients um particularly around um, smoking right smoking cessation and watching someone who'd been smoking for 20 years 25 years right within two weeks, never pick up another cigarette. And I'm going, that's, that's a chemical addiction. That's not just a habit. Like that's a chemical addiction plus a habit and routine over 25 years. And in two, two weeks, no mas, Hmm. like what else could this do? Right? Like if it can, if it can fix that, what else could it help fix? And so that's what really got me pulled into it. And so, you know, I did a lot of work around confidence, relationships, communication, like, you know, grit, like, I mean, just all sorts of like work around those things. And what I love about hypnotherapy is and neuro-linguistic programming, it's more about like reprogramming and resetting than going into the source code to figure out why the bug is there. Mm. Right. So a lot of traditional therapies, and I'm not knocking traditional therapies, there are time and places for all of them. They spend a lot of time going back to figure out why something is the way that it is. Oh, my dad didn't hug me enough. Right. Okay. I can't go back to five-year-old me and start getting more hugs. Right. So just because I found the source code bug doesn't mean I can change it. Whereas neurolinguistic programming, hypnotherapy is about rewriting that code, like installing a new software. And I love that. It's much faster. It's more efficient to go through. And so, um, no, I, I, I still, to this, to this day, at least two sessions a year, at least, wow. right. Depending on where, where I'm at and how I'm feeling. So I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody. I was actually pre pandemic looking, at hiring full time, my sales org a hypnotherapist and neurolinguistic programming expert, like a full time. Cause imagine, like, think about like all the shit that salespeople deal with stress, anxiety, confidence, imposter syndrome, right? Not following through poor execution, time management, focus, all of those things. Imagine if I had someone on staff full time to help them work through those things. Hmm. Like, come on man like if i if i was still leading a team right now 100 percent, i would work that into the budget 100 percent. yeah you you probably appreciate uh did did you ever watch ted the the movie uh uh the the tv show on apple tv where they have um Mm -mm. he's like a a soccer coach and he has like a like a sports psychologist like in in house no is it ted lasso 
Yeah, I'm sorry, Ted Lasso. My bad. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I, 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 I know <laughs> what you're referencing. I haven't watched yet. A lot of people have told me I need uh, dude, you would, to, you but I, I have. It. Okay. I love it. But uh, the reason why I mentioned that is that, yeah, um, and she's a black lady too, but she's freaking a rock star. She just, Ted just has all these like um, fear mechanisms and then like he resists like, he's like, no, like this is voodoo stuff. Like I don't believe in her. Mm -hmm. And then he sees all of his players like go from like scared to like just crushing it. And he's like, all right, fine. And then he like finally takes the plunge, but that she like rewires him. And then, yeah, I, I feel like that's a good example. Um, yeah, you, you probably would have loved that. So I, I just, I just completed on Friday working at a company called Coach Hub where each employee has access to a coach, like an executive coach slash mm -hmm. uh, life coach. So that was a product that I was selling to corporate and it was awesome. And like, I got so much from that. My, my person, she did a lot of the Tony Robbins stuff. So she was like really trained in uh, neuro-linguistic programming, but man, that, that was the best ROI ever, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, so much, so much. And this is where more and more of my time and focus goes, man, is like, and I'm working on this even with my own coach, right? I have a coach as well that I work with. And what we talk about so often now is it's all about your your being, right? Who you're being. And if you think about it, right? Like that's truthfully like all it ever comes down to is if you tell, if you ask someone what it takes to be successful in sales, they will almost always give you states of being. You need to be confident need to be a good listener, be empathetic, be resilient, be persevering, be gritty, be creative, right? Those are all states of being. But then once we get into sales, all the focus is on what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Make the call, send the email, run disco, handle objections, all about the do, and we never address the being. Uh -huh. If I could just get you to be confident, be resilient, and be high integrity, meaning you follow through, if I could get you to be those three things, the do takes care of itself. Hmm. There's no shortage of what to do out there. We just no one. We, we just don't tend to be who we need to be. And so that's where I'm doing a lot of work, not only with myself, but also for how do I bring that to market? How do I bring that to salespeople? Right? Like that's that's where I'm really focusing right now. That's that's awesome because you don't hear a lot of people talk about the being like in sales. Like it's just. You know, even with spin selling, challenger sales, like I think there's some elements of it, but it's all, like you said, it's very focused on the actions and, and the strategy and, and less about like just, you know, the, the inner the inner stuff. Right. So that that's awesome that you're you're bringing that. That's adding a lot of value. Cool. Well, yeah, this, this has been a pretty interesting conversation. Um, what I'm curious. So hypnotherapy. Yeah, I, I did hypnotherapy just once. Right. Um, I was part of this social group called Ivy where they were putting together like a, a, a promo video for hypnotherapist and just in one session like she helped me get over a lot of my people pleasing tendencies and I was like what just happened it was like nine it was like 45 minutes to an hour or something like that but it was more impactful like you said than like 10 hours of therapy prior before that it was just mm -hmm. insane yeah, no, absolutely. And again, I don't want to knock traditional therapies. There are reasons for it, places for it. If anyone listening is in therapy, keep going. This is not a, any way, <laughs> call it, this is not financial or medical advice. Like, but like, there's also, I believe a lot of place for like, let's rewire, let's reprogram how we're thinking. And we'll be much happier. That's awesome, man. I honestly, I did not expect us to talk about this during our conversation, but I, I love it. Uh, yeah, I think sales does need a, a bit of um, a shift. Like, yes, it's like it's important to do the spin selling and the Sandler sales and all that. But I think married with some um, ontological, like being fo focused work, I think would be like the perfect marriage, right? Yeah. yeah, there are very, very, very few salespeople that are doing what they're supposed to do and not succeeding. Just like all walks of life, most of our failures become of what we don't do, not what we do do, right? Sand, if you do Sandler properly, you'll succeed. If you do spin properly, you'll succeed. If you do Challenger properly, you'll succeed. If you do Medic, Med Pick, Winning by Design, Spiced, if you do it, you there are very few people out there actually doing it properly and not succeeding. The do is not the problem. The problem is most people don't do it. And that's the problem we actually need to solve. Hmm. What, what do you mean by people like don't like they don't follow the what it's right. they 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 don't right they don't follow 
the process. They don't put in the activity. They don't actually make the call. They don't actually ask the question. They don't actually log the notes in the CRM. They don't actually follow up. The, the, the sales methodologies are very similar to terms of diets, right? Generally speaking, most diets work. Hmm. You just don't do it. Yeah. Right? You need to be able to, to do it. And the reason we don't do it is because of who we are being. And that's what we need to try to figure out. There are things right now, anyone listening and you talking to me right now, there are things you know you should be doing right now that you're not. Right. Period. Yeah. Right. You know, you know, <laughs> you should be doing something. You know, there's something that needs to be done and you have it. It is not a doing issue. It's a being issue. And if we could solve that, that's what then leads to properly doing. Yeah, this has been enlightening. Um, it's 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 I'm, I feel like I've you know I've been a lot of sales. Po- I think I've done over 160 sales podcasts, and this is the first time that I've actually like had this conversation, right? Because usually people separate the two, right? A lot of I've had coaching conversations where we talk about this, but in sales, but it's awesome that you're able to integrate it, and and people get to really be introspective and be like, hmm. Yeah, you're right. There, there's something there. Um, cool, man. Well, yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for, for coming on the, the CXO Circle. Uh, this has been a refreshing conversation. And uh, what, what's the best way people can get in touch with you? Um, definitely. I mean, they can tune into to my podcast, Live Better, Sell Better. Um, it's a lot of content there, right? Again, trying to merge the two, like there's sales, but there's also then how we're living, how we are being. And then, you know, follow me on LinkedIn as well. I'm kind of at the connection limit, but you can definitely follow and engage with my content there. I'd say those are the two best places to, to do so. Okay, cool. Thanks, Katie. Appreciate you. Take care. Oh, yeah.